This is the Black Pot, aka Kuku Shunamo. Where we speak truth to power. Now, here we don't criticize, but if we must criticize, we'll do it on one condition. Yes, to build and not to destroy. That is why we say we are in the service of God and country. This is the voice of the people, and the voice of the people is the voice of God. It's the black pot. Coco show them out. I'm from the news reel. We endeavor to always keep it real. Today we're going to the news reel, and we have a number of things to keep real. Now the very first story I'm looking at today is here, and I needed to come along, my brethren. Now hear this man. Open your ears and listen with rapt attention. I'm reading this, my brother, my sister from Ghana, Weber. And he says, Kwesi Ahoy apologizes to Mahama over controversial comments. Now, the former Minister for Agriculture, Kwesi Ahoy, has apologized to the flag bearer of the National Democratic Congress, NDC, John Tramani Mahama, for the unfortunate comments at a reception for Professor Nana Jane Opokwajimain. I sincerely regret the wrong impression that my comment has created indeed it was not my intention and never would it be my intention to pray that his excellency john dramani mahama does not serve his full four-year term when he wins the 2024 general elections i concede that i misspoke on the occasion, I accept the criticisms in good faith, even though some of the criticisms arise out of a deliberate misinterpretation of my statement. Mr. Ahoy stated in a statement. I have taken notice of the unfortunate controversy that has arisen as a result of a comment I made at the reception organized last Thursday by the um, Church Street group of the NDC faithfuls for Professor Jane Nana Opoku Ajima, running mate to our um, esteemed flag bearer, His Excellency John Dramani Mahama. Well, he goes on to say and to talk and to talk and to talk. And at the end of it all, he's apologizing for something he has said. Yeah. Hear me now, brethren. What did Professor Kwesi Ahoy say? It's very simple. Now, the good old professor simply said something. What did he say? The good old Kwesi Ahoy said something. What did he say? He said, that Nana Opoku Ajimai should get ready to be president whether she liked it or not. He didn't end there. He went ahead to say, you know what happened in the case of Atta Mills? So you two get ready. Only a foolish man will talk like this. My brother, my sister, it is very good that Kwesi Ahoy has come out to apologize. But many people have also said that he's had probably one too many drinks on the night. It is so unfortunate when elderly people, statesmen supposedly, talk like this. And I'm so ashamed at some of these utterances. At a time when poisoning has taken center stage of our politics. People can poison people so that they could have their own way in politics. At a time when Elen Bela Mugabe made it so clear that politics was so sweet that he could sell his own mother, biological mother, in order to do politics. My brother, my sister, an utterance like this is nothing but truly shameful. Again, I am very, very happy that the good old Kwesi Ahoy 
A maverick in Ghanaian politics has come out to apologize. But first and foremost, what came into the mind of Kwesi Ahoy? At the time he was saying this, were you happy that Atta Mills died whilst he was in power? So many people have said in the past and even at present that John Dramani Mahama would have never ever moved towards the presidency had it not been Atta Mills, his political mentor. A man who picked him up from nowhere and made him his vice president. In fact, his running mate. At the end of the day, together they won the election. And it gave some credibility to John Dramani Mahama. And he moved on from nowhere, my brother, my sister, to become president. John Dramani Mahama was a man who was respected even at the time that he was an MP and even before that, that he would always speak the truth. He would speak so nicely without attacking people and throwing invectives all over the place. He had some level of respect, but nobody ever expected that he would even move towards the presidency. But thanks to John Evans Atta Mills, he sat down, looked deep into the annals of his party, and he realized that there was one person in there who was a political nobody, and he was ready to make him a political somebody. This is what we need in Ghana. When people give privileges, when people are able to help the nobodies become somebodies. Today, John Dramani Mahama would always appreciate John Evans Atta Mills, my brother, my sister, for what he did for him. Of course, many people were not happy that Mahama had all of a sudden become a running mate. Many were those who never even gave him a dog's chance. But at the end of the day, the will of God must be done. They won the elections and moved on. Before they realized he became their flag bearer again and won the election. Many were happy that he had lost in the last elections and lost again. Many would even be happier when he loses again. But my brother, my sister, in all things, the will of God is supreme. I cannot phantom why a man like Kwesi Ahoy would come out and say such nauseous things. My brother, my sister, I have never drank alcohol. I don't know how it feels to speak with dead courage. I don't know how it feels to be drunk all my life. I have never tasted alcohol or smoked anything smokable. So I don't know how it feels to be under the influence. But if it is something that makes you lose your mind, why do you drink it? Why do you smoke it? If it is something that brings out the hatred inside you, so that right now it can be very, very plain, and it can manifest, then it is something everybody should drink or smoke. There are some people, they are full of so much pretense. My brother, my sister, they pretend a lot. They only speak the truth when they are drunk. There are some people who never ever speak the truth until they have smoked something. I remember when I was in Takra, they working with a certain radio station named with Held. My boss used to tell me, there are some people here in management positions who are hypocrites. That is why every quarter we take them to a hotel for a gathering. We make available alcohol to them. When they drink, then they can speak their mind and their hatred and plans and plots can come out. Kwesi Ahoy has apologized. But from where I sit, I'm not too happy with what he said. I am glad his party has decided to forgive him. My brother, my sister. And that he's not a man who normally says things like this. Why did he all of a sudden pick up the microphone to say something like this? Imagine this was coming from an NPP person talking to Baumia or about Baumia's running mate. It would have been all over the place that these are the poison people. They are the people who are carrying political poison around. Killing people left, right, and center. It would have taken a national dimension that because Baumia, for the first time, has become the flag bearer of their party from the north, 
somebody is planning to poison him. My brother, my sister, I am so ashamed at this comment. And I think that Kwesi Ahoy should do more than just apologize. By his deeds, we should be able to see that he actually misspoke. And he I can't, I can't phantom. This is sheer hatred, sheer wickedness. I want to reserve the rest of the words. I have known Kwesi Ahoy from when I was a little boy attending T.A. Mother Secondary School. He used to be heavily bearded and heavily mustached. These days, the beard is gone. But when I see Kwesi Ahoy, I still remember him in the days as a little child. Heavy beard, heavy mustache. I still have that image in my mind. When I see him without his beard, I don't recognize him. Because this is the picture I've always kept in my mind. I've always seen a radical man working at the J.J. Rollins in those days. I remember how we used to admire all those people who worked under Rollins. My brother, my sister, he was a stalwart in the NDC. Today, my brother, my sister, these utterances, even though he's apologized for that, I don't know how that is going to pan out between him and a lot of the good people of this country, the members of his political party, and faithfuls of John Dramani Mahama. Kwesi Ahoy, with all respect, I think that there is a lot you can do to redeem yourself, rather than just a mere apology. We are waiting for you to be drunk again, and we'll hear what we'll say next. I'll leave it here. Now the next thing I want to look at is this, and I'm reading from uh, my, my own three news, the most authentic source of news online. It says, I'll be more accountable to Ghanaians because I will face them again after 2024. Listen to this, old. listen to this carefully. I will be more accountable to Ghanaians because I will face them again after 2024. And that is Baomia. I read. Now the flag bearer of the NPP, Dr. Mahmoud Baomia, has said that if elected into office as president, he will be more accountable to Ghanaians than his uh, main contender, former President John Dramadi Mahama, whom he said will not be accountable to the people because he will not seek re-election. I'll leave it here. So, Bawamia is almost becoming like Chada. The more these two guys speak, the more you realize that we have been scammed into believing that they were smart. Anytime Chada opens his mouth to speak, I see some ignoramus who is in the least smart. Baomiya these days, anytime he opens his mouth to speak, I see a little toddler with little or no brains. And I hate this feeling. The other guy said he was going to extend the sea to Kumasi because they did it in, in Dubai. And everybody, including cockroaches and lizards, horses and tigers, are all laughing at him. Instead of going into political oblivion and forgetting whatever political plans he had and return quickly with geometric acceleration into his crafts business he's still going around there telling Ghanaians he wants to be president what a joke of a country and there are a few people who still believe in this cheddar guy what a joker Bawamia is a bigger joke to be very honest with you, if they put Cheda on my left and put Baumia on my right for president, and these are the only people I can vote for, I will go for Cheda. Baumia has become extremely lackadaisical and hypocritical. Should I go into detail? Listen to Baumia. According to 3news.com, oh, when you vote me as president, Remember, I'll be more accountable to you because I will have to face you again. 
He is not going to be accountable to you because you deserve. Because by principle, a man who has been given a lot must be accountable. He must actually put accountability in the center space. But he's only going to be accountable to you because he will come and beg you again to make him president. Can you think the way I'm thinking? The man is only going to be accountable to you because he will come begging you again for the mandate to be president. Jesus have mercy. I wish this was the, in the days of the revolution. In fact, I wish I were God. I would have sent Baumia straight to the gates of hell today to be sodomized by Satan 48 hours nonstop before I bring him back. Jesus have mercy. Can you believe this? Bawamia says that he would be accountable to the people, more accountable than John Dramani Mahama, because he will come to the people again to ask them for their mandate after 2024. Aside that, his conscience does not tell him, his Muslim conscience does not tell him, his human conscience does not tell him that, listen, accountability must take center stage. Accountability, probity, my brother, my sister. I'm so ashamed. I am not worshiping God because I want to go to heaven. Yes, it is important, but I'm worshiping God because I love God. I am worshiping God because I believe that what God has done for me needs me to be able to come out and worship him. I am not loving you conditionally. I am loving you unconditionally. It doesn't matter what you give me and it don't matter what you don't give me. I am loving you unconditionally. This is not the language Baumia is speaking. He is accountable to you conditionally that he would come to you again and demand that you vote for him to be president. Such people should never be presidents of this country. They should never hold any official position in this country. They should never hold any public office in this country. They are not real. They are conditional faithfuls. And these people are more dangerous than the IMF and the World Bank. I won't talk anymore. Next thing I want to look at is coming from City News. And it says, we borrow for projects because we don't generate enough revenue. And this is the second major utterance. I mean, Anta is saying. The second major utterance from Amin Anta since he became finance minister. The first one was that Mr. President should not sign the LGBTQI plus thing because we have a lot to benefit from those who are engaged in it we have a lot to benefit from the west and for that matter our sovereignty should be thrown under the bus so that we can continue eating crumbs from off the table of the west that was the first utterance he made as finance minister meanwhile this guy here is busily fasting in ramadan this man here is busily trying to go to mecca a country that 100 percent believes that homosexuality is a sin and they have one of the worst homosexuality lgbtqi plus punishments and laws in the country in the world right after this he is going to be in a hurry to go around the kaaba and do tawaf run around it and say ya allah ya muhammad ya allah ya muhammad right after that He's going to implant to a country that is worse in the loss of the LGBTQI+. My brother, my sister, he says the president should not sign because we want to continue to be hewers of wood and drawers of water. If anything at all, there's one thing I'm happy about. I want the West 
to be very, 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 very wild on our country and refuse us every kind of aid and stop all these people from flying outside to their country so that this will force us to build our own country. I mean, Anta Adam is speaking again. We borrow for projects because we don't generate enough revenue. And I read, the Minister of Finance, Dr. Mohammed Amin Adam, has highlighted the inadequacy of the country's generated revenue to meet its infrastructure demands. He underscored the necessity for the government to resort to borrowing from the international capital market to supplement its efforts in addressing the country's infrastructure needs. I end here. I mean, Anta is not a smart finance person. I don't know who made him finance minister. But this guy is not smart. Listen, oh. listen to what the guy is saying. I mean, Anta says, in our country, we do not generate, listen, we do not generate enough revenue. For that matter, it is okay to go out there and borrow to fix infrastructure. Now, when we fix the infrastructure, how do we make the money to pay back the loan? That's common sense. Common sense is not common to common guys like Aminanta. I'm so ashamed. I thought this guy was a little bit more smart than this finance minister that they kicked out. But it looks like he's worse. These guys are nothing but slave drivers. They are happy celebrating laws with KNK parties. They are happy running around night and day, drawing us closer and closer to slavery. Yet they claim that they are independent. What a joke. Amin Anta says that in our country, we do not generate enough revenue. For that matter, it is okay to go out there and borrow to fix infrastructure. Now, when you fix the infrastructure, how do you make the money to pay back? How do you generate revenue to pay back the loans when you say you do not generate revenue? My brother, it's like saying, oh, in our country, the basket leaks a lot. For that matter, we are unable to put water into it. Or we are unable to fetch enough water to build our house. So we go out there and we borrow water to come and build our house. When it's time to pay back the water, what basket do you use to fetch water to pay back? Common sense. Common sense. Uzi Kenteino. Won't to me fansa and show be bre and cosi dying. And ti wako amonani ako jin suaba. Wa fra n suo aba. Se uba be si dain. Na usi dain u ya. Amon amamon amanoni fwa se triaka. Ken sa kentena na udi be san su ako ma manoni fwa no na. Sometimes they don't understand the English I speak. So I have to speak my broken tree. And quite fancy, they can make come easy. Whilst we say anti fancy, we say me a tardy boy. The bend then, we say bend then, the way and then. I say, tell me, this is what this guy is saying. He is saying that. We do not generate enough revenue in our country. So, we go out there and borrow from the people who make and generate enough revenue from their country to come and fix our own infrastructure. Right after that, the big question is this. How do we pay back? A sensible society should be thinking about how you can seal the loopholes in the basket. How you can seal the loopholes in the revenue. Why are you the finance, f finance minister? Baumia comes to say, oh, GRA is chasing people too much and uh, is chasing businessmen too much for blah, 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 blah. And I sit back, I'm like, quiet. 
these guys are the children of Satan. They are hypocrites. If I were God, I would send Amin, Anta, my brother, my sister, to kindergarten again to go and learn the rudiments of finance. I'm so ashamed. Fix the revenue. I am an advocate of tax. The people have to be responsible. They must pay the right taxes. I don't believe in overtaxing the people. I go to so many countries where people pay tax, and I know what the taxes used to do for them. Therefore, I don't fight taxes. When you tell me, with all the gold and the diamond, the bauxite and the lithium, that you are unable to generate enough revenue, therefore, your only means of doing this is to go out there and borrow. Then I see that you are a cheap finance minister. You don't have what it takes to be finance minister. We are in trouble. Oh, what a shame. Did I say more? Hey, I mean, Anta. Hey, I leave it here. Turn up, son. You are a little more time, son. Yabo! Now, the last thing I want to quickly look at. I didn't intend looking at this today, but I think I got to look at it. Funny face has been involved in an accident. According to people who were there, they said when he came out of the car, he was drunk. Videos are circulating. He hit about five people. Some have said that, oh, about two of them died. But DKB has come out to debunk that. And he says he's been to the hospital. As at the time he was at the hospital and leaving the hospital at 2 a.m., nobody had died. Our nation has failed the citizenry again. We do not take mental health seriously. And it hurts me. My brother, if this was the wife of a minister of state that funny face had a hit with his car, if this was the daughter of a minister of state that funny face had a hit with his car, I am sure that we would start taking mental health serious. Mental health is a sickness. My brother, funny face will walk free anywhere he goes once it is proven that he was suffering from a certain kind of sickness. Mentally. My brother, what should we have done? Once we realize that funny face was going through mental issues. The first thing we could have done was to take away his driver's license. Get him to the psychiatric hospital. He had been to the psychiatric hospital a couple of times. Did they recommend that his driver's license should be taken away? Only God knows how many pilots are flying our planes in Ghana that have mental issues. Imagine a mentally ill pilot. He's flying a plane to Tamale. Just as he takes off, my brother, he starts announcing things. And you hear from what he says. And judge that no, this man is under the weather of mental health. He decides to crash the plane. Is that when? We will take mental health serious. We have failed. The little children knocked down by funny face. We have failed funny face himself. He could have killed himself. Did I say more? I leave it here. It's been the blood pot, aka Kukushunamo. And here we speak truth to power.